What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. As you can tell by the title of today's video, we are going to be playing with a bunch of just random makeup that I have been collecting and hoarding that I need to use before it expires and I need to play with to update you guys. We have a mix of luxury drugstore. I have Too Faced, Wet n Wild, Milani, Tarte. So this is just, like I said, gonna be a little bit of a mishmash. It's kind of a mess. We'll see how it goes. I'm hoping that we will discover some really great products today and I am very much ready to cover up my bare face. So if you guys are interested in watching me play with some old but new products for me, then just keep watching. All right, so I'm gonna pin my hair back just because like, It's just been making me so mad lately. I'm getting my hair done next week. Um, I just... <sighs> so I'm gonna scooch in a little bit closer because we are going to be doing kind of a full face situation. Um, I don't have an entire full face of new products, but I do have some kind of like onesies and twosies. So we're just gonna play with whatever we've got sitting in front of us. So first things first, I want to start with primer and I do have a new primer to test out. This is the Tarte High Performance, oh, no, sorry, 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 sorry. This is the Tarte Timeless Smoothing Primer. So this is kind of small for a primer. This is what it looks like, how many? So it's 0.5 fluid ounces and it comes in this like nice little jar. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of this. Ooh, it's like a paste. That's really interesting. It kind of almost reminds me of the same texture as like the Tatcha Silk Canvas, just more like silicone-y maybe? Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Okay. I kind of like this. It feels... My skin looks like instantly like matte. And I'm just taking a little bit at a time because I don't really know how this stuff like works or is going to react with my skin. Um, it does seem to be buildable. Um, some matte pore filling primers I have, if you rub them too much, they kind of ball up and like get pilly in between my fingers, but this is like gliding on like so smooth. There's that, so far so good, I'm into it. Um, I do not have a new foundation to test out, but I am just gonna quickly go in with my Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation. I have not used this in such a long time. So I have the shade Porcelain. This might be a little light for me, but I am pretty pasty at the moment. And I always use too much of this foundation because it's so fun to put on. Um, so I'm gonna take a little bit of warm beige and just do like a few, just to like, not look too pale, I guess, is what I'm going for. I was thinking about trying the new Hourglass Vanish Foundation, the liquid one, but I just don't think it's gonna be my cup of tea. Which, to be honest, the stick one, I love the finish of it. I think it's so pretty. And I'm usually not a stick foundation kind of gal because exactly what's happening, it takes forever to blend out. But this one, I always make an exception for. So I wanted to use a foundation I knew I really loved with this primer to kind of give it a fair shot and I think it looks really nice. It looks really light. It doesn't look cakey at all. Everything looks just so smooth, even where I have some dry patches and stuff. Um, but so far I'm really, really enjoying it. I think it looks really pretty and seamless. So for concealer, I'm just going in with my Huda Beauty Concealer. This is in the shade 04N Meringue. I am obsessed with this concealer. I think it's really full coverage and they have a really great shade range. I will give them that. It is pretty heavily scented, kind of like their foundation, but I actually don't hate the scent. I think it smells really good, um, but I don't love that I'm putting something so fragranced on my face, but you know, you gotta pick and choose your battles sometimes. So I'm just gonna blend that per usual in my T-zone. And I'm just kind of running through this part rather quickly because again, these are not new products, but I did wanna use a few things that I knew would work really well 
and that I love just to give the other products kind of a fair shot. I don't like when I test out a new primer and then a new foundation and I'm like, well, do I hate the primer or the foundation or both? Like you, you just don't know and then you have to keep trying it out and suffer through more bad makeup days and sometimes I just like to test one or two things at a time like face products wise because then you can really tell what's working and what's not. So for a setting powder, I do have the Too Faced Peach Perfect. This is by no means new. This has been out, I think, for like a year or so exactly. Um, this is just the translucent setting powder. So this is what it looks like, really cute packaging. Again, you've probably seen this a million and one times. This is nothing new at all, but I wanna give it a go. And ooh, I like how it has the little plastic sifter that's nice for like travel and stuff. And it really does smell like peaches. So I'm just gonna dump a little bit into the lid. It's kind of pinky toned actually. It's not completely like chalk white. And I'm not gonna bake, but I am just gonna kind of pat this in underneath my eyes to set that concealer. And as always, I'm using my damp beauty blender and I'm just gonna basically, I just got it in my mouth. <laughs> It tastes good. It tastes sweet. That's weird. <coughs> That's weird. It doesn't taste bad. It just, it does have a taste. <laughs> I have used the peach foundation from this line before, so I kind of knew what to expect with the scent and all that. Um, but if you are very susceptible to certain smells, um, I would definitely smell this in the store before you purchase just to make sure that it's not a deal breaker for you. It looks so airbrushed. Oh my god. Sorry, I keep stopping like every 30 seconds and looking, but I'm just so whoa, curious. We will for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure continue to use this powder. Love it. Okay. So I have a bronzer to test out. This is the new Wet n Wild Color Icon Bronzer and this is in the shade Palm Beach Ready. Um, I don't know if you can see, but it is <laughs> um, shimmery to say the least. Um, so I do have my Marc Jacobs Omega Bronzer here in the event that this does not work out um, because I'm really afraid. We are gonna give it a fair shot. I'm just taking an Orf uh, Orphe? <laughs> I'm just taking a Morphe M530 brush and, oh my God, I'm so scared. I'm just gonna bronze up the perimeters of my face. actually kind of a light bronzer. I thought it was going to be a lot darker. It looked a lot scarier like in the pan, I guess. I don't know. It's not like translating, but oh my god, this is so shimmery. No, 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 no. Okay, this, uh, uh, it's too shimmery for me, honestly. So I'm just going in with my Marc Jacobs Omega bronzer. I'm just going to go over just to warm everything up a little bit more. This is a trusty one see this side of my face versus this side. I don't know, that shimmery bronzer just didn't really do much for me. All right, for blush, I have this Lorac Color Source Buildable Blush in the shade Spectra. That's what it looks like. It's just like a mauve pink color. Um, and I'm just gonna take that on a Morphe E4 brush. And I do like their packaging because it's like that, like magnetic, like it's super nice. Coming off like a lot like cooler, Toned like pinky on camera. It's more of like a mauvey, dusty pink in real person, in real person, in real life. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take and tap off the excess and just sweep this on my cheeks. Mmm, that's so pretty. I didn't feel like I was gonna like this because I do have some Lorac blushes that I really like already. Yeah, that looks really nice. Gives you like a girly flush, kind of. I think this is a really pretty like everyday 
blush. I think it's really nice. It's a super wearable color. So before we finish up our face with highlight and all of that, I want to go in and do some eyeshadow. So I picked up this Milani Bold Obsessions palette. This came out a while ago again. Um, but I was realizing I really don't have any like drugstore. I don't have a lot of drugstore makeup anymore. I've gotten rid of a lot of it. Um, and I definitely don't have any like nice eyeshadow palettes. So I'm hoping that maybe this guy can serve as, ooh, look at this packaging. That's nice. Maybe this can serve as like a nice travel palette or, so this is what it looks like. This looks so much like the steel of eyeshadow palettes, like through my eyes. Is that what it's called? This looks like a steel palette to me. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do, hmm, let me see, because I also have, in addition to this palette, because it has a few mattes in there, I do have the Dose of Colors Block Party Shadows, and then I have these Tarte Chrome Paint Shadow Pots. Um, so quickly, just in these, just to play around, I have this color, which is called Leaf Me Alone which is this really pretty tealy green color that matches my shirt exactly. So I don't think I'm gonna use that. What is this, Heart of Gold? I know I have a gold paint pot too, or a chrome pot rather. Ooh, that's so pretty. That's like a foiled greeny gold kind of antique -y color. So this is the Block Party eyeshadow in Heart of Gold. So that's a contender for sure. So then the other two I have are Fire Dancer and Martini. So Fire Dancer is like a maroon color, but this is it here. Let's swatch it. Oh my God, are you seeing this? Okay, that's beautiful and metallic. That's so pretty. So this is like the exact same as this. This looks super foiled and pretty though. So this is the block party shadow. That's it right there. That's really sparkly and pretty. And then let's swatch the chrome pot. This has a really unique texture. Hmm. I think I'm gonna go in with the chrome pot. These chrome pots are really unique um, and have a really interesting texture. So I kind of want to play with those for you guys and see if we need to use like Fix Plus or glitter glue or kind of see what the deal is with that. Alrighty, so I scooted myself even closer um, and we are going to go in with the Bold Obsessions palette first. I'm going to go in with this. Does it give you the names? Yeah, but they're reversed. Oh, I'm gonna screw this up. So I'm going to go into Camp, Camp Pink Straight. It's this kind of like creamy pinky toned down here. And this comes with a super nice full mirror. So I'm just gonna use that. And I'm just gonna put this all over my lid just to set my lid. So I'm not gonna do too crazy of an eyeshadow look. I really just wanna focus on like the formula, like the pigmentation, that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm going to go into the shade Sweet as Honey, which is this one right here, and I'm going to use that as kind of a transition shade. Um, I'm noticing right off the bat, there are only one, two, three, four, four mattes, and there's two kind of metallic-y and like five shimmery, I would say, satin, satin shades. So um, not a ton of mattes. And I'm just taking this on a Morphe E27 brush and just kind of blending this messily in my crease. That is super pigmented though. And I'm just repeating the same thing on my other eye. So I don't know if this is kind of like a one-stop shop palette because for the look I want to do, there's only like one, two, shades that I can really use if I want to go into the black. I don't, that's a little bit too harsh for me, but it jumps from this like warm transition shade here to this like a dark chocolate brown. So that is a little bit concerning to me because I don't feel that I can get a full complete look out of this palette. So what I'm actually going to do is go into my bronzer and I'm going to use this as kind of my second crease transition shade. 
um, just because there isn't really an in-between that's matte. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go into this Tarte Chrome Pot. Again, this is Chrome Paint Shadow Pot. Um, this is in the shade Martini. I'm just going to tap this on my eye. Oh my God. And this is with no fix plus or glitter glue, like. Holy crap. So I am getting a little bit of fallout from this guy, I'm noticing. But it is pretty easy to just kind of wipe away. So now going back into the Bold Obsessions palette, I'm going to go into this chocolate brown shade here called Brunettes Have Fun. It's this one right here. And I'm just going to darken up the outer corner with this a tiny bit. So I think these shadows are definitely pretty pigmented. Um, the colors are really, really pretty. You do get a nice mix of like cool tone and warm tone, but this just is not a complete palette to me. I have other palettes that I prefer over this, but I do think that it is really pigmented and nice. I don't think there's anything wrong with um, the formula. It is pretty easy to blend out, I would say. There is a little bit of patchiness going on here, but again, it's a $10 eyeshadow palette. You can't be that upset about it. So I think for the price point, it's definitely good. Um, so now I'm going to go into the shade Sands of Time, this kind of beigey champagne -y color, and I'm just going to highlight my inner corner and brow bone with that. I don't hate this palette. I think it's really pretty. I don't know if I would reach for this like on a daily basis just because you are a little bit limited, but I think that it's pretty great value for what you're getting. So I'm just gonna work on my bottom lash line a little bit. I'm just gonna pull a, a ploy, a ploy, apply a dark brown liner. So now I'm just gonna take this tiny Morphe definer brush. This has no number on it, but it's just like this little tiny pencil brush and I'm going to go back into that chocolate color here. I'm just going to smoke that out a little bit. And then I'm just gonna take a fluffy, clean blending brush and go into our Sweet As Honey transition shade and I'm just going to blend that out a little bit. So I'm just going to put on a few coats of mascara and my eyebrows off camera, and then I will be back to finish up the face and apply some lashes. So I have new lashes that I do want to try out. These are the Kiss Lash Couture and Naked Drama Collection, and these are in the shade the style chiffon. I just thought that they were really pretty, kind of fluffy, wispy, um, a little more on the natural side, which I usually go for something more dramatic, but I just thought that these might be a new change and they just look really easy to use. The band is really thin. It has the cushion flexi band. So I'm just going to use my House of Lashes glue and I'm just going to pull these babies off and trim them up and get them fitted for my eye size because I have really small eyes. I've also gotten a few questions on how I apply false lashes. So if you guys want me to do a video on that, like specifically dedicated towards applying strip lashes. I don't really use individuals just because that's too much time for me, but if you guys are interested in seeing how I apply these guys, then I would be more than happy to do that video. Just leave me a comment down below. So while that glue gets a little bit tacky, I am going to set my face with my Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. Um, I like to do this before I apply highlighter just so it has something to kind of adhere to. And this stuff is such a fine mist, I am obsessed with it. I use it all the time. This is the Wet n Wild um, Loose Highlighting Powder in I'm So Lit. I just talked about this in my February favorites video, so if you haven't checked that out yet, I will link it down below or in a card up here. Um, but I really wanted to use it on camera just so you guys could see how crazy this is. Because I know I swatched it in that video, but you didn't really get to see it in use. My favorite way to use this is on a Morphe M501 brush. You just have really, really good control with this one. So now I'm just going to pop these lashes on really quick. They are nice and tacky. And 
And the band on these is so thin. I didn't use eyeliner or anything. These are really, really pretty. So pretty. They're definitely lengthening, not volumizing. All right, let's move on and wrap up this video. I know we've been sitting here for a while, but all that's left are lip products. So I have two lip products that I want to play with today. Um, the first are these MAC Powder Kiss lipsticks. These are not particularly new, but they just did come out with some new shades. These are the original shades. I just haven't tested these out at all yet. And then I have, believe it or not, this Kylie Jenner lip gloss in the shade literally. This is like a cult favorite. Everyone talks about this. Some of you already may know I hate her liquid lipsticks. For some reason, I just can't get into them. I do not care for them at all. I was a little skeptical to try the gloss out, but I've heard people rave about these and everybody's talking about them, so I figured let's test it out. So first I'm gonna go in with these Powder Kiss lipsticks and I have three shades here. The first is 311 My Tweety. And this has the exact same packaging as their regular bolt lipsticks. It's just matte compared to the shiny packaging. So this is what it looks like. This is the shade My Tweety. I will go ahead and swatch it for you. Wow, they look so matte in the tube, but they're really creamy when you swatch it on your hands. So that's what that one looks like. It's just like a nice light nude. And then I have 314 Mullet Over. That's really pretty. This is Mullet Over right here, and this is the first shade I swatched. And then our last shade is Devoted to Chili 316. I love this color. I kind of want to wear this one. That's devoted to chili. It's like a orangey brick red kind of color. But since our gloss is nude, I guess we will have to stick with one of the nude shades. So this is the literally gloss that I was talking about. Um, I got kind of a shoddy applicator. The bristles are like sticking to the side a little bit, um, but I'm just gonna swatch it. It's this nude color on top here. Looks pretty, it looks really pigmented, so I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt. I don't know why I have so much beef with like Kylie Cosmetics and I just don't like it, um, but that's just how I feel about it, so sorry. I'm just gonna go in with an Urban Decay lip liner to carve out my lips a little bit, and this is uh, Stark Naked. Now I'm gonna go in with my Tweety. I would normally never wear this color. It's kind of like a peachy warm nude, but I'm kind of here for it. I kind of really, really love it. I'm not gonna lie. Not quite as creamy as like a cream sheen, but it is really, really comfortable to wear. So now I'm gonna go in with the Literally Gloss. This is thick. It smells like icing. I don't like that. I like minty glosses, which I know a lot of people don't like. It is really pretty though, I must say. It is super opaque. All right, you guys, so this is the final makeup look. I think it came out really, really pretty. It's just kind of soft and natural, um, just kind of like an easy glam. Like I said, I didn't want to do anything too crazy because I really wanted to focus on the products we were using themselves. So I quickly just wanted to walk you guys through everything one last time and kind of give you guys my final thoughts and opinions. So we will go in order of the products that we applied to our face. So the first thing that we tried was the Tarte Clean Slate Timeless Smoothing Primer. So this is definitely going to be a staple in my collection, I can already tell. I really, really love the consistency of this. It's very pore filling, very smoothing. It does feel like a silicone -y primer a little bit, but it is a paste. And for some reason, this just doesn't feel like it's gonna clog all my pores like a lot of silicone primers usually do for me. I feel like when I'm putting a silicone primer on, I'm like, oh, this is such an oil slick and my skin's gonna look temporarily good while I put makeup over it, but it just feels so heavy and thick. This was super lightweight and it really just did a great job of filling everything in. I kind of just pressed it into my T-zone 
and then swirled it around the rest of my face, whatever was left over on my fingers. I think it is really buildable. I did start with a very, very small amount at first. You don't need a lot, but I prefer to use a lot of primer. So um, I did add to it and build on top, and it just laid really nicely on my skin. I could immediately see kind of a blurring effect taking place. So this to me is just a home run right off the bat. After using it one time, I can already tell that I am definitely going to be reaching for this more. So then I went in with the Too Faced Peach Perfect setting powder. Again, this was just so blurring and such a great product that made my skin just look so airbrushed and perfect. It's exactly what you want from a powder. I will tell you, be wary of it. It is heavily fragranced and it does have a taste to it. This just did such a good job of blurring everything out, setting my foundation down really nicely, and I think it did add a little bit of longevity to my foundation. Um, the tackiness is gone. It feels really lightweight, doesn't look cakey, but I do feel like this is going to preserve my makeup and my foundation is gonna look really good all day long. So a product that I didn't love was this Wet n Wild Color Icon Bronzer in Palm Beach Ready. Like I said, this product was just so shimmery for me. Um, I don't know if you can see it with my lights, but this has legit like glitter and sparkle chunks in it and that's just, I don't know, it's just not really my vibe. The tone of it itself is a little bit yellowy. Um, I don't really love that for my skin tone. I think that I just picked a bad shade, but even if I picked a shade I liked, I just, I can't get past the glitter chunks in here. I do like a nice bronzer with like a sheen, like the Physicians Formula bronzer it does have a little bit of a sheen to it, but it looks really natural and fresh. This to me just looked a little bit chunky and glittery and it just, it wasn't my cup of tea. I did have to go in with a second bronzer to kind of touch up and really get the effect that I wanted. For blush, we went in with the Lorax Spectra blush. Um, again, the packaging on these is a 10 out of 10. Super luxurious, you get the nice magnet. The formula of these is super great. It was really nice and pigmented. The color is super wearable, really pretty. Again, I don't know why it's showing up so like pink on camera. It's definitely more of a mauve, like dusty rose color. Um, so don't be fooled by what you see on screen. It is a little bit more toned down and I think it's just really, really beautiful. I think this is a really nice natural like everyday wear. It goes with a lot of different looks. And if you do go a little bit heavy handed with this, you don't have to worry because you can easily blend this product out. It sat really nicely on top of my powders and it blended really seamlessly with my bronzer and my highlight. I think it just makes you look really healthy and I really, really like this one a lot. So let's quickly touch on eye products. Um, this Milani Bold Obsessions palette I think is decent value for the drugstore. I believe this was like $10, maybe like 14 tops. I don't know, I need to look. But I think that this is a dupe for some of the Stila eyeshadow palettes. Like I said, the kind of like, the I think it's called Through My Eyes or something like that. Um, so you do get a nice range of cool tones and warm tones, like I said, and kind of neutrals here. But I do wish there were some more matte shades. I don't feel like I was able to get like a complete look out of this. I was lacking some more transition or creep shades. But I think it's a really nice beginner palette. The tones in these are really pretty. They're very wearable while you still have color. And I mean, look how pigmented that is. That's a pigmented black for a drugstore eyeshadow palette. And the metallics are really, really pretty. There's this gold shade here that's in the middle. But I just... I need more matte. So I wanted to talk about these chrome paint pots one last time. I use the shade Martini. These are so cool. They really have an interesting texture. They're not a cream, but they're not a powder. They're a nice in-between and they are so metallic and foiled. I didn't use any glitter glue with these, any Fix Plus. I literally just used my finger to pat, 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 and it went on so smoothly and so vibrant. I think that these are really, really nice if you're looking for a really metallic or foiled shadow. I think they're super user-friendly. They weren't a complete mess, surprisingly, because they are a little bit bouncy and they do have some more texture. They're not necessarily a powder. They do stay put pretty well. Um, but they're not icky and gonna slide around and melt off you and get oily like a cream shadow would. So I think that these are super awesome. So my camera battery is starting to die. That is a sign that I've been sitting here for far too long and I need to wrap this up. So I quickly wanna just touch base on these lip products. This was the Kylie Lip Gloss in the shade Literally, and then this was the MAC Powder Kiss in 
my Tweety 311. So again, I really, really love this formula. It's really comfortable to wear. I love this lip combo. I think I would definitely wear this again. It's a really nice nude. This is more on the warm tone side, um, but really, really pretty formula. It gives you a really comfortable wear, but still that nice matte lipstick look. And then this lip gloss, I don't love the brush applicator. I'm definitely more of a doe foot kind of girl, but this just, was super opaque, it's really glossy, it's pretty, it blended nicely on top of my lipstick and lip liner. It does smell like icing, which is a really sweet smell, so if you're kind of not in the scent of things, you might not like this. But I don't like the matte liquid lips, but I think the glosses are definitely really, really high quality. All right, you guys, that's going to conclude this video. I really hope you enjoyed this kind of random mishmash of products try on. Let me know down below in the comments if you've used any of these products and if they've worked for you and whatever other product recommendations you have. I'm always looking for new makeup to test out for you guys and I love to hear what works for you and what you guys are loving at the moment. So I'm really excited. I have lots of fun videos coming up for you as per usual. So be sure to subscribe to my channel and click the little bell notification below so you don't miss any of my uploads. And as always, thank you so, so, so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Just fine before I met you I drink too much and that's an issue But I'm okay